Hi, this is Chief Education Officer Bill Olson, and welcome to another school district update. Well, it's a very active time of year, uh, filming this in the second week in April. Uh, this is when we begin to look at closing out our activities uh, as we proceed forward over the next two months. Uh, a lot of assessment of students, a lot of reports to the Department of Education, a lot of reflection on the year that has transpired and how we begin to plan for the following year. But it's always exciting and always for a worthy cause and that is trying to do what's best for all of our students at all times. This is being filmed the day after the election and I want to take a moment to thank all of the voters who voted yesterday and particularly those voters who approved all of our warrant articles. Please know how much that's appreciated and how much that provides us with a lot of momentum a lot of inspiration, a lot of motivation to keep bringing forth great ideas that will have a positive impact on the children in our school district. We're always looking to make great things happen for our students. And in order to do that, it takes careful planning on a part of our staff, but it takes the strong support of our school board, the budget committee, and all of you in the community. And so my thanks to you for allowing us to continue the positive momentum that we have developed over the last year and a half to two years and to bring great programs to your students. I want to particularly recognize those voters who are of the age level where they no longer have children in the school district. And it's obvious in looking at the results, the election results, that a lot of people who are empty nesters voted to approve the warrant articles for the school district. And for that, we're very, very appreciative. I know as you continue to age, it's becomes progressively more difficult to afford certain things in taxes, in groceries, and uh, the various sundries in life. And please know how much I appreciate that and understand the fact that you feel that your support for the school district is in the best interest in the town your best interest and the best interest of our country and so I thank you very much. Uh, from the bottom of my heart it's not easy to vote for warrant articles that involve the expenditure of funds but please know my intent and the intent of everyone in our school district is to provide you with a great return on your investment. But that's our pledge to you. I want to uh, thank the Merrimack Rotary Club and the Merrimack Rotary Club has always been a great partner with the Merrimack School District. Uh, the Rotary Club is uh, sponsoring the Excellence in the Workplace uh, nominations and celebration uh, for people who have gone above and beyond the normal scope of their workday uh, schedules and responsibilities. And I want to uh, congratulate four nominees who will be uh, attending a celebration that the Rotary will be conducting on April 20th of this year. Uh, these four people have been nominated for the Rotary Recognition of Excellence in the Workplace. And that's uh, Christy Moore, a uh, teacher at uh, TFS. Uh, Cynthia Blanchett, who is a JMU's kitchen manager. Bunny Saranita, the MHS band and music teacher. And Patricia Zink, who is a Merrimack High School uh, special education teacher. You only want to focus on, on Cynthia Blanchett for a minute. Everyone matters. Everyone makes a difference in the development of a child. It doesn't make any difference whether you're an administrator, a teacher, a paraprofessional, a custodian, a maintenance, a, a, a cafeteria worker. Everyone, everyone has an impact. And so it's great to see that Cynthia was nominated along with the other staff members for the Excellence in the Workplace Award. So we congratulate them and look forward to uh, their being recognized by the Rotary and once again, Thank you for the Merrimack Rotary Club for being such a wonderful, supportive partner of our school district. I want to congratulate uh, teacher April Doss, who is a uh, Thornton's Ferry teacher who has been nominated for the 2024 Teacher of the Year Award through the New Hampshire Department of Education. Um, as you know, uh, Sue Bradford last year was 
uh, one of the finalists uh, for the Teacher of the Year Award uh, in the state, uh, an outstanding teacher, and we congratulate April for all the work that she has done to earn that nomination uh, for being considered for the New Hampshire Teacher of the Year this, this year. I want to thank Mackenzie Murphy, a uh, member of our school, uh, school budget committee. Uh, Mackenzie uh, is an enrollment specialist um, in the admissions department of Nashua Community College. Um, Nashua Community College recently held an event for local school districts uh, to explain the nature of their programs and how much they would like to partner with local school districts. So I'm going to be meeting with our assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, uh, Amy Doyle, and we will have a follow-up meeting with Mackenzie Murphy and see how we can increase the level of interaction and engagement with, uh, with Nashua Community College to the benefit of our high school students. Uh, we want to make sure that we provide our high school students with as much opportunity and as many opportunities as possible. Uh, speaking of opportunities, I want to tell you of the excellent progress that we're making in planning uh, extended learning opportunities and alternative pathways to graduation for our high school students. As you know, um, a while back I hired uh, Holly Hall, one of our uh, high school teachers who is extraordinarily enthusiastic and has hit the ground running to plan for extended learning opportunities for alternative pathways for some of our students at the high school to continue on to receive a high school diploma. You know, the conventional comprehensive high school curriculum is, is not necessarily for everyone, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We're all different, which makes us all the same, essentially, but it's, it's important that we meet the needs of every student in our school district. And sometimes, some of the students at the high school, and earlier years, but particularly when they uh, enter the high school, need some alternative programming. A little bit different schedule, uh, a little bit different uh, curriculum, a little bit different instructional approach, and the benefit of extended learning opportunities and their ability to display competencies that may not result from seat time, just sitting in a seat all day and working on a paper and pencil or, or digital assessment. So we want to give our high school students every chance in the world to realize a high school diploma and move on either to further their their education in college or in the military or in the world of work. And so we're very excited. Holly has done an outstanding job. Uh, I want to also thank our school board chair, Lori Rothhouse. Lori has had over the years extensive experience in after school and evening programs. And Lori has uh, been gracious enough and s very supportive in devoting her time to help us write a grant uh, that we are submitting this month to the Department of Education for funding. She has had extensive experience in grant writing and extensive experience in afternoon and evening programs, and we greatly appreciate her help and her support. Um, I want to um, also mention a, a particular student at the high school, uh, C.J. Fricano, and C.J., I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, an outstanding student who's a, who's a junior. Uh, he is conducting an Eagle project and met with me uh, earlier this week to explain the nature of the Eagle project. Uh, I told him I'd love to be the first contributor to his project for buying materials. CJ is going to be constructing some um, vegetable garden uh, planting areas in back of the high school uh, for our students in uh, PASS and CATSET programs to work on in terms of planting, uh, managing crops, and harvesting them. Uh, I've had experience with that in, in another school district in which I work. Um, it's a great opportunity for students to, to learn additional life skills. And so I'm very enthusiastic about it. Uh, CJ has done an outstanding job in planning this. Looking forward to see the, seeing the progress on it. If you'd like to donate, um, please send me an email. And I'll pr provide you with um, an address where you can send a donation because there will be some material uh, purchases involved in constructing the planting beds that CJ is going to put in the back of the high school. So congratulations to him for that outstanding project. Uh, some additional student recognitions, and I could go on all day and 
because we have outstanding students, we have outstanding staff doing wonderful things that uh, provide meaning and development in their lives. And not only sports, but in the theater and performing arts, fine and performing arts, I'll get to all of them today, but um, in terms of sports, in terms of gymnastics, Neil LeBlanc, I want to congratulate for the New Hampshire uh, Interscholastic Athletic Association Gymnastics All-Around State Championship, just an outstanding accomplishment. Uh, in boys wrestling, Brendan Curley was the uh, New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association Division II wrestling championship. So congratulations to uh, Brendan. Uh, swim team, Josie Stevens is the Division I 200-yard individual medley champion. And Sarah Conquest is the Division I 100-yard fly championship. Some outstanding, outstanding accomplishments. Um, also, from uh, Melanie Hedlund, we have begun the tutoring program and the mentoring program. Um, and I more correctly should mention it is a mentoring program between our high school students and elementary students. Uh, it has started up again in earnest after a sort of a two year hiatus because of the unfortunate uh, pandemic, COVID pandemic. But uh, the mentors are meeting once a week with their mentee for about a half an hour to create a positive, healthy peer relationship for in playing games, um, drawing, talking, et cetera, and talking about um, childhood experiences and uh, some of the happy times in life that they have all shared. And working towards providing our younger students with great mo role models in very positive roles uh, that's extraordinarily important. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've seen this many times before in my career where adults can talk with children and they will absorb a certain amount of, uh, of information and have a certain degree of attentiveness. But once uh, they, they meet with other students, particularly high school students, they are fixated on those students in terms of what they have to say and what they have to bring in terms of a, of a positive message. So thank you to our students for doing that. We also want to thank the High School uh, Activ Activism and Civic Engagement Club. Last uh, week, within the last couple of weeks, they held a very, very good and informative candidates night. And they sponsored that and, uh, and facilitated it. And so our students are, are increasingly becoming engaged in the community to our benefit and to the community's benefit. Um, from Mike Susi, our athletic director, uh, 16 students participated in the New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association and the, the New Hampshire Athletic Directors Association Scholar Athlete Awards Ceremony earlier um, in Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, the senior athletes were recognized because they had a varsity letter in at least two sports and they maintained at least a B plus or better cumulative grade point average. And so congratulations to them. And Kayla Scully, Trent Jackson, Matthew Licata, Emily Weinfield, Jackson Forbes, Lily Marshall, Maxwell Townsend, Heather Haddad, Tyler Sastrom, Kaylee Dillon, Romello Hyde, Nathan Beauregard, Amelia Pinkerton, Tyler Bernard, Michael Morin, and Riley Sylvester. Thank you for all of them. Great, great scholar athletes. We want to thank Merrick Bennett, a uh, artist of in residence for meeting with students at the TFS. He's a cartoonist, educator, and musician who lives in, in New Hampshire. And he, he brought to uh, Thornton's Ferry a wonderfully engaging program for our students and has provided a number of volunteer hours in working with TFS students. I want to remind you again of uh, the Bright Futures survey. Uh, we'll be putting a link and making sure we have a very prominent link on our district webpage for you to participate this is an opportunity to be able to gather information about you in support of the Department of Education's federal reporting of indicators um, and parent engagement practices that will work to the benefit of local school districts. And so uh, look for that link. Uh, that survey is due on or before April 29th. We hope you will take a look at it and participate in the uh, survey. Uh, from Sarah Campbell, uh, outstanding teacher at the high school, the Granite State Challenge team from Merrimack High School defeated Sohegan High School in the quarterfinals uh, by a score of 520 to 210. They did an outstanding job in that competition. This is the sixth year in a row that the Merrimack team 
uh, is going on to the semifinals, and they will face about, uh, I think it's about April 27th, they will face the winner of the St. Thomas Aquinas and Hopkinton School District competition. So congratulations to the Granite State uh, Challenge Team, and we wish them the best of uh, luck. Um, the high school held an outstanding uh, college and career fair uh, this past week. Over 100 representatives from industry, the trades, military, and higher education, two and four-year colleges, uh, participated. We want to thank the high school for organizing that. Just a word um, about two and four-year colleges. I would always encourage you to think about a two-year college. If your student is is uncertain in terms of what they'd like to do for a major in college, uh, uncertain about attending college. Uh, my feeling is that two-year colleges in, in our country are the best bargain in higher education. I've taught in four-year colleges, I've taught in two-year colleges for over 30 years, and the two-year colleges have been outstanding. So don't, uh, don't rule those out in terms of consideration. Uh, I always tell parents, um, higher education is becoming more and more a matter of return on investment. And it's very difficult for any parent to sustain a $60,000 experiment in the first year of college if, you, if your student is really not quite sure what they want to do. And that's okay. It's okay to be unsure at this point in their lives. But consider those two year colleges, because I think you'll find, particularly with their ability to transfer it to a four year college, it's a great bargain, an excellent bargain in higher education. Um, carrying on, uh, from Amy Piccolo at the high school, New Hampshire uh, Scholastics Arts um, celebrates creative teens. We want to congratulate Jordan uh, Zever, who received a New Hampshire Scholastic Gold Key Award uh, for his submission in the art competition. And he went on, and uh, he was awarded at a higher level the National Scholastic Silver Key Award. So. Our congratulations to, congratulations to Jordan for an outstanding job. Um, this week, always an interesting week at Merrimack High School. It's um, Spirit Week. And uh, I know from many years of experience in seeing various high schools celebrate Spirit Week, it's a great, great week of events for students. Uh, this year's the class theme for the senior classes was uh, Tropical Friday. The juniors was Welcome to the Jungle. Sophomore theme is Disco Fever, and I know that one from years ago. And the freshman is Jersey Day, and so uh, and I'm sure they're having a great week and ending off this Friday with a great, great spirited day. You know, one of the most um, valued employees in our school di district is uh, Fern Seiden, who is the director of um, student wellness. Uh, Fern is always, always developing programs for our students, our staff, and for the community, dealing with social-emotional wellness, which is so important, particularly in this era of uh, public education and the development of children over, over a period of years. Um, more and more students are coming to school with issues of anxiety, of depression, uh, mental health issues, and those are issues that we want to be able to address as effectively as possible. May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and uh, Fern has arranged for uh, the theme of mental health in the digital age. Uh, she is addressing that in the entire month of May. And Fern is supporting a, uh, and conducting a community book read of uh, ScreenWise by Devorah Heitner. Uh, you can offer 30 books, uh, three books to people who, uh, first the 30 people who sign up, uh, and you can look at uh, look at this information on the district website. I asked Fern to uh, to join me today because she is such a contributor to the functioning of our school district and the wellness, as I said, of students and staff. We had a leadership team meeting recently where we talked about the impact of digital involvement of students outside of the school day and how that is beginning to filter into our schools and school day and impact functioning by certain students. And so I want to take a moment to introduce Fern to you. Uh, she 
really you talk about a contributor in life and a person who is passionate about helping students. So Fern, welcome. Glad you can join me today. Thank you so much for having me. So tell me about uh, the May Mental Health Awareness and the uh, theme of mental health in the digital age, what you're doing with the community to address that. Sure, thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I want to start by thanking a group of uh, parents who uh, are the, we call them the, the title is the Community and Family Connection Team, and they really do a lot with me to help me shape the ideas mm -hmm. that we want to present. And it was really their um, idea to, you know, we were talking about uh, Mental Health Awareness Month what we want to bring to the community and they said everybody universally uh, everybody wonders am I doing the right thing around social media around the use of a phone how old is it that I get them a phone now we have watches where parents can mm -hmm. uh, and children can be communicating with parents throughout the day with texting there's there's so much and it's so hard to navigate all these choices and um, to think about uh, how do I how do I help my child grow up in this digital age. And I said, that is such a good idea. Mm -hmm. And so we then set about to kind of create a month around that theme. And I know that also we see that on the school end too. So that's happening at home, but it's also happening in schools where uh, teachers, as you said, are uh, having to help students work through, uh, and, and administrators helping students work through conflicts, mm -hmm. situations that may have happened over the weekend or at home. Um, through social media and um, through you know texting and snapchat and and whatnot so we all it's really one of those issues that really pulls us all together we all have to be learning about this together and understanding how to support kids with this um, so that's the exploration this month it's really a journey together because really it's a matter of discovery we're we're all in it together in terms mm -hmm. of, of learning what this new frontier is about in terms of of raising children in this world. So um, we have picked this book called ScreenWise. Um, there is on the website, on our district website, on school website, uh, there is a, um, a flyer that you can find that looks like this. And it has a uh, one of these codes that you can mm -hmm. um, take and get, sign up, and also an, uh, a, t a link that you can sign up for this. I get it. I'll get you a, a copy. It says what school you're associated with, so I'll make sure that there are copies for you to pick up. And I've looked at it. I think the, I've read it, and I think the topics, the reason why we chose it was the topics are so relevant. It, because it's really about, you know, I think we struggle with, do we want to keep our kids from this altogether, take the phone away? Or do we give in to it because it causes so many conflicts and maybe mm -hmm. it's not the fight we need to fight, it's just inevitable. How do we, where do we land on that? And this book is, helps us rethink a, a model or a framework to understand what to do with that. And the model that I, I love, what she talks about is how can we be the mentor? How can we be a mentor to our children? One of the, uh, uh, just as a tease, one of the chapters which I love is it says, um, empathy is the app how can we teach mm -hmm. empathy if we want our kids to have empathy in general in life how can we teach how can we use apps to help empathy like utilize the phone to create connections and have empathy for others and also how can we teach children to use social media and their phones in an empathic way and it shows you really is getting at how can we communicate or help our children use phones in a way that really are expressive of our family's yeah. values. Each person, each family has different values and we wanna, wanna think about how that connects with the use of technology in the home. So I love this book and the greatest thing was when I got in touch, I didn't think this national author would ever deign to you know speak it for us and mm -hmm. she did. She's gonna come um, on May 22nd. Um, is she's gonna visit us through a Zoom and we're going to get to ask her questions. So we'll read the book, Terrific. and then we'll get to hear from her, ask her questions. And she has a new book coming out in September, and the, the topic sounds amazing. It's, or the title, it's called Growing Up in Public, which is another very interesting mm. idea of how public um, our children's lives are through because of social media. So I really hope people join us. And we have other... Uh, topics as well. We have five different um, events happening in May. 
um, we for Mental Health Awareness Month. We are going to be watching a new film, the world premiere of a new film called Anxious Nation. And I will be showing it in my office space. So come, it's a watch party of this film and it features um, Lynn Lyons, who is one of the mm -hmm. now uh, really nationally and internationally known specialists in anxiety and helping young people with anxiety. And um, she's actually in this film, she's from New Hampshire, so that's really special. And we've had a relationship with her. The district has been, she's been a friend of the district for a long time. Um, we've got also um, uh, Jess Thompson, who is an ABA, and she's gonna be talking about supporting uh, regulation, uh, mm -hmm. how to help children with self-regulation and managing their behaviors in the home. And then we've got three events that are around uh, this topic of social media. The other one is on May 11th, we are watching another film, another watch, uh, another watch party, will be Screenagers, the next chapter, Uncovering Skills for Stress Resilience. And we'll have some panelists there and hold a conversation. Again, JMU's 117, I'm excited to have you there. And then, um, Finally, we have, well, then we have Deborah Heitner, as well as um, on May 30th, we've got um, the uh, Merrimack Police Department is gonna talk about internet safety wow. and more of that safety mm -hmm. perspective of making sure. And just a thought, um, I once had somebody tell me at the beginning, back, way back, think about 2012 when phones first became ubiquitous and everybody mm -hmm. had them. And um, we had, somebody said, would you ever drop your child off in the middle of New York City and just leave them there? And I was like, of course not. And they were like, that's basically what you're doing if you don't know where your kids are going on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I went, uh, so that's always stuck with me. So it'll be good to hear from, um, from the Merrimack PD about internet safety. You know, I have to thank you for always trying to bring positive, constructive training and programs to the school district. Um, it does make a difference, and, and you are making a great difference here. It's, um, you know, we, we see children coming to school more and more showing the impacts of, um, of the acrimony that exists in society right now, and, and the difficulty in terms of um, the relational aspect of social media, cell phone usage, and, the, and, and what that is doing to some of us uh, children uh, in terms of really hurting feelings, um, providing great anxiety, uh, fear in some cases, but it doesn't have to be. And here's where a person like yourself comes, comes in with such importance to our school district. I would encourage you, because we're gonna finish out in about the next 10, 15 seconds. I would encourage you, if, you've ever, if you'd ever like to learn more about how to work with your children, how to act as a mentor, uh, how to uh, develop strategies on reducing anxiety, um, get in touch with Fern. Definitely. Because Fern is uh, just an outstanding resource, and I can't tell you how glad I am that you're working in this school district with all of us and, and what a valuable role you play. So can't thank you enough. And uh, I'll have Fern on some more. I just want to show uh, one more book. Can yes. I interrupt you with one you, more? Sure, go right I ahead. just wanted to share this because this one is uh, I had purchased because Elizabeth Eng Englander is a person who's an expert in violence prevention and bullying prevention. And she came out with this book, which I think is wonderful for, uh, you know, when you're first starting to talk about having a phone, what, it, what that means um, and the important responsibility uh, that it uh, requires mm -hmm. of children and so I just wanted to promote this it's called you got a phone now read this book so it's a great if you you're looking for a way to introduce your child to the cell phone I would highly recommend this one terrific um, and I think we may have had Elizabeth provide you, some training in uh, school my former she's school in Massachusetts yes, yeah she's in a Massachusetts uh, she's in Massachusetts she's a uh, nationally known though for yes. bullying prevention yeah. and safety all right I want to wrap this up, Fern. Thank you very You're much welcome. for being so thank informative. You. This is Bill Olson, Chief Education Officer. Thank you for joining. Look forward to seeing you next time.